Hey everybody. Season's winding down. I gotta hide in the truck uh, to do, do this week's video because it is blowing and snowing out. Pretty hard. So, I saved you all the wind noise. <laughs> I thought this week we'd revisit uh, young Jacob and see how he's doing with his bow hunting. I know the video is a little late. Um, he was busy with college and I was busy on road trips so it got delayed a little bit um, but it's a good video I think you'll enjoy it uh, it was an area that I had hunted just two days before uh, had a mature buck come in uh, didn't get a great eye on him but I could see him I could hear him through some thick brush some really really low guttural grunts set up here to explain it a little more. There's a giant small bitter swamp oak patch that runs north to south here. And all along it is this steep drop off that goes to way down to bluff edges and stuff. And there's a few bedding points on the other side of it. And on the opposite side of this Oak Patch is the access trail, and it's very commonly used one by hikers and everything. But the thing is, the only way to hunt this edge that they travel and scrape and run along like crazy is to go through the oaks. Otherwise, you bust all up and down it. So the key is to just cross at the middle of your shooting lane and have some to your right and some to your left that you could also shoot. And then just shoot them before they get to the point you crossed. And make sure your wind isn't going down the trail. The wind right now is coming from the oaks out down to here. I've got two very steep ditches, one right here that's impassable. I've got one on my other side that's impassable, and I actually have a third pretty far away. And they act as great pitch points to funnel the deer up here. I just believe it was does because there was at least two of them. And my plan here is to have bucks cruising these oaks. Set checking for does bedding in them. Cruising right on the downwind side. So I'm hoping that those does might either come back or if they were an estrus and a buck might track them back to where they were. Because he'll cross me to do so a lot of activity at the same time last year in this spot on trail camera including a couple giant giant bugs so I'm hoping to catch them on the same pattern as last year it's a very very cold cold morning and I'm gonna sit as long as possible hopefully that this pays off hopefully I have a nice buck come by if not 
this is on the near side of the property to access. I'm going to progress my way through the season, moving further and further back to where people are less likely to have been already. I don't really think many people have been here, but there were scrapes and ropes along this line, and while I only did cross at one point, I haven't seen any scrapes or new rubs. And there weren't any out in the open on the access trail, so it tells me that this place is getting a lot more pressure. And I know it is from how many people are typically in the parking lot here when I drive by. Hopefully Big Buck comes in soon, but I'm willing to wait for him. excited for a sit. This is right where that buck bedded, right on top of this little high knoll here. Doe came out from right there. The deer that I saw this morning were chasing, were going right along this line, and then cut through the uh, pin oaks. Otherwise that would have come right by me. I've got a whole bunch of shots and really concealed cover. There's fresh rubs and scrapes and beds everywhere. I think this is it. Right over here is some major buck bedding, some of the best buck bedding on the property. Uh, the wind's perfect. It's just off. If it starts to get a little swirly, I might be in trouble, but you know, you need to be pushing the limits. I don't think I stepped at all where those deer are going to win me coming from the right where my previous stand set was further right. I don't think, well, I know that nothing's really worried about that coming to the left. I think there's great potential for a big buck to come on in here for one of the first times he'll do it this year. And I think that there's also great potential for me to bump and dump on that decent buck that I saw. It was just on the cusp of being a shooter. Actually, you can see in his bed right there made a rub and snapped the tree off. He was feeling pretty aggressive today, and that doe coming in shortly after he left is probably going to get him jacked up if he comes to scent check this. She wasn't flicking her tail or anything, but she had her tail kind of abnormally tight to her butt. Um, she didn't spook hard or anything. I think she saw me and just slightly trotted, but she wasn't even sure what she saw. 
this is absolutely perfect. I'm really, really excited. The second time I went in was just two days later. We had a lot of historical footage from that area that it was a great rut cruising area, especially pre-rut. So some bucks that were getting pushed off the private land because a lot of the private land owners went to hunt around that time of year. Uh, they pushed a lot of the their favorite bedding off of the private land. A lot of those mature bucks got pushed off of there by the hunting pressure coming from the private. And they actually went to where there's a little bit less pressure on the public now. Granted, there's people hunting the public every day, but not in these areas that were super far back. Uh, in this particular area I was, you have to cross a very deep ravine and then um, get up onto the other side. And in that area, most of the year, the majority of the pressure is coming to the private, even though some people access from the public. And I, I was relying on this pressure to push some of the better bucks that we've seen habitually this time of the year, now two years in a row, um, cruising these areas. Uh, getting jumped out of the primary bedding and going to their secondary, which is on the public, and it's also in very close proximity to some doe bedding that is active all year round. So I was in an area that I had footage of a um, a doe in asterisk, but I think, I believe it was the first doe to come in asterisk on October 24th or 5th. Uh, she was bleeding out in the field, uh, watched her do some peeing, went up and smelled the pee afterward, definitely in asterisk. Um, and then within those same days, we got pictures of bucks. And uh, these were some really special deer. And um, this was October 26th, 24th, or 26th to 28th, um, even a little bit on the 29th, we got these pictures. And we noticed that it was rut cruising. Uh, we didn't get pictures of these bucks the whole rest of the year, ex with the exception of two mature bucks. Um, we didn't get pictures of them the whole rest of the year beforehand or afterward. And it was just clearly. Uh, an area that they went every year to cruise to check this doe bedding and they'd hang out more if they ended up finding a hot doe and she held up in that area. So it was kind of like a perfect storm area. Uh, the sign was matching up um, after the first hunt on October 26th. I felt there was a lot of action. I exited and I could see eight fresh scrapes within a 20 yard stretch and fresh rubs and everything. The sign was definitely there. Hearing that mature buck in the morning was definitely uh, an uh, exciting sign. And this was going to be October 28th, I believe it was a Thursday, and I had till 12.30, and at 12.30 I had an exam. I got an exam at 12.30 today. So I'm doing a short set and studying in the stand. For the next year, i got to be a student before a hunter. I know that will shift to worker before hunter, but I'm going to have to enjoy this while I can. I had a deer walk under me, not directly under me, but out here, before light. And I think it was a buck, I heard it scrape a little bit. And as it was leaving, I heard it wrapping its tines onto the brush. And I decided to stay till about 9.30. And um, not much action during the morning. Beforehand, I had some deer uh, before light cruising around me. Uh, heard a little bit of grunting out of sight, um, which was cool, but I never got a good eye on deer. And then around 9.30, I start to pack up my stuff. And um, I hear some rustling that was a lot louder than the squirrels I was typically hearing.
He was right on the edge of a shooter for me, but that got me jacked up. Oh my gosh. Let's go. Oh my god. Talk about reading the script. Oh my god. He's laying right there. Perfect shot. Dead within not even 20 yards. Let's freaking go. Let's go. Come on, let's go. Yes. Oh my gosh. Let's go. That's freaking sweet. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. He just read the script perfectly, actually. All right. I'm hoping I got this on video for you guys because I had no time to adjust the angle. I grabbed my bow, got it up, and I can hear grunting behind them. And it's grunting, grunting, grunting. So I'm just getting ready. And um, right as I see any movement back there, I draw. And it had to be, I don't know, 40 seconds. Um, but I just let him work up. And then he stopped and smelled the bed of the buck I jumped yesterday. Came in right to it. Turned cornering to and bam. Freaking slapped him with it. And he's dead right there. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Let's go. That's freaking sweet. Let's go. All the land. Before class, taking out the stuff and studying, let's go. Freaking jacked. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> yes. Oh, man, I can't. It's exactly what I wanted to happen. Hello? Hey, um, put it on the lard and onions because I'm going to gut you a buck. I have an exam at 12.30, and I slipped out for a quick hunt, and I, a pretty decent eight-pointer came in chasing three does. Really? They went, Yeah, and I, I shot him, and he died within 15 yards. Nice. Yeah, I'm freaking hyped. I haven't got a great look at his rack or anything yet, but I can see him dead. And um, I, I mean, I think he's just a mainframe eight, not super wide, but, like, it just, I don't know, it got me excited, so I thought... You know, if you're jacked up about it, you might as well shoot it. Oh, so, right. I'm really, <laughs> I'm hyped. Uh, Good for you. Yeah, so I'll have to send you some pictures, but you are going to be the first person I called no matter what, so. Oh, well, that's, a, oh, wow, I feel great. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> good, good. Well, hopefully that rides on. I'm just hyped because I can see him dead, but I know i got a long drag and a lot of work to do from here, but, oh, man. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was doing flashcards in the tree stand, but uh, it's just con it's continuous improvement. It's an an industrial engineering course, so it's not 
nearly as hard as ME. It's yeah. So I'm be fine. It basically, make sure you're being efficient and don't kill anyone with something stupid, and you're good to go. Right. <laughs> avoid that whole situation. Right. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, oh, I'm. Great. Good for you. I'm gonna call right. mom and some buddies, um, but I knew I needed to call you first. So. Well, thank you very much. Yep. Okay. All right. Yeah, all right. Love you. Love Have you too. One. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Oh, I look forward to that so much. All right. There's the stand. This kind of path the doe ran along. here. This is a bed the buck was sniffing, the one I jumped one out of yesterday. Don't know where the arrow is, but I don't really care where the arrow is if the deer is right there. Oh, he's a nice little buck. Not huge. I got a little excited, shot a small one. That's okay. That's still sweet. That makes me happy. Sweet. Perfect shot. Definitely some ground shrinkage, but that's okay. Very happy to get anything at all. Oh, you guys saw that that buck does not fit my goals. Um, he's not representative of what I wanted to accomplish this season. That deer came in grunting and um, chasing does and I just saw antlers through the brush. Uh, the second I saw movement I knew I needed to draw because the does were still moving around there about five yards down to my left. Um, and so they're right there. I can't move or they're gonna see me. So I draw thankfully when their heads are hidden as you guys can hear in the audio is when I draw. and. Um, I didn't have a lot of, like, mind on judging this buck as much. Um, I watched him clear the cover. He, I remember seeing um, the fork on his side, and there's a buck on that property that I've been chasing that I have found habitually in that exact spot uh, last year and the year before on the exact day that I was hunting that has that fork, but it's on a G3. So it, it it's a really nice deer. It's a 12-point buck. And... Um, I thought there was a good chance to him. Um, this buck had a little bit smaller body than the ones that I'm used to in that area. So his rack to body size ratio was that of a really nice buck, but I just didn't realize he was smaller. So like the typical buck that we see with like a mainframe 8 is already pretty large in this area. And so that would make him probably a monster um, if he truly had a large size body. Uh, but he didn't. Um, and I was so focused on putting a clean shot on him and, and just going through my form and my head over at, over and over, keeping that pin lined up on his body that I wasn't really checking out his rack. I wasn't um, making those judgment decisions that you probably see a more experienced hunter make. And um, that's, that comes down to inexperience. That comes down to um, me focusing more on my shot than whether I should be shooting this deer or not. And at the end of the day, it's still a nice buck and it's still meat in the freezer. But uh, those are kind of the reasons I ended up shooting the deer. My first, I think my first question ever on the forum, I'd always, I'd been a part of it for a while, uh, but my first question ever was, what time of day do deer even bed? Because I was buying into all this bed hunting and getting on their beds and learning about that, and I was so confused on when they even freaking bedded during the day. And this was freshman year of college. Like, I had bow hunted on my own for two years before that. I had watched all the dance DVDs and stuff like that, but I didn't even understand, like I never paid enough attention to even understand that deer bed pretty much all freaking day, um, with the exception of the rut. And um, that's just to show you guys, like, I have killed two mature bucks on public land. I I've killed one mature buck, truthfully, on public land. I've killed probably five bucks in my life um, on public land. And I have had a lot of doe killing, meat hunting success and stuff like that, and that's kind of where I've been. And so I've never had the opportunity to really have to break down and guess in the moment. Um, I've always been more focused on the shot and known that if I got excited, it was something I wanted to kill. So 
while this is the second biggest buck I've ever shot, um, it's nowhere near what I've wanted to in terms of my goals because I kind of put myself past that. Um, and I know plenty of people are probably looking at it saying it's a great deer and I shouldn't be upset about it at all, but you know, I'm kind of just holding myself to an standard and to a standard and to tell you the truth, like I'm way more happy than I am frustrated with that. I'm so glad I got to experience that, uh, the gift of the meat of that deer and the crazy cool experience of having him chase in does, them standing five yards from me, having to be drawn and, and make a decision and a shot and do it cleanly, have the deer die on camera and nearly five bounds away from where I shot it is an absolute gift. Um, but yeah, it was it was crazy cool, but I just want to let you guys know I'm young in my career. I'll make mistakes. This was one, in my opinion. But um, it's about being optimistic and moving on and improving from there, and that's what I'm going to do. Just the memos of the hunt. Um, be ready. You never know when that last minute is going to be the minute that it happens. Um, be thankful. Think about the things that are all gifted to you, the reason that you can go out there and hunt, all the people that support you in your life and allow you to, you know, chase this dream of yours and be thankful that an animal sacrificed its life for you to have some sustenance and a great experience. Um, think about all those amazing things and be thankful for them and those will fuel you past those days that you don't see a deer or you miss your mature buck that you've been targeting all year. Be really thankful and um, the third, I guess, when you make mistakes, keep chugging. You know, all these guys make mistakes. All these people that have come up hunting have made endless mistakes. And um, I think what the Hunting Beast channel does fantastically is to publicize those and not hide them and show that, like, hey, some of the best guys in the history of public land hunting, mature bucks, are making mistakes all the time. And the difference is they're learning from it, they're posting it, and they're helping you learn from it too. Thank you guys very much for um, all your support. I love when guys reach out to me on Instagram, Facebook, whatever, um, and they message me saying like, hey, I took some stuff from your video and I shot this buck, or just hearing a story about the deer you killed. Um, I love hearing those stories. I love when guys DM me. I love when people comment on Facebook posts like this. Um, please drop a like and subscribe to this channel. I really hope I can be making videos for these guys a lot more. Tell me your stories. I love hearing them. I love sharing them and I learn from them, um, and if you guys ever want to reach out, say hi, ask a question, anything like that, I would be absolutely thrilled to help out, and um, I just love deer hunting, I love expanding the community, and um, I can't thank you guys enough for the support and the kind words, it makes my day, every single comment you guys make makes my day, um, and honestly sometimes when I'm sad and I'm stressed about school and wrestling, I go back to those comments and I think about how I'm literally achieving a dream of mine right now. I love to watch young guys grow as hunters, to see their achievements, to see them reach out for goals, to see their struggles, and to see how they go about rising up above them. A lot of time those young guys who really, really want it bad are let down even though they've achieved something many of us seasoned veterans would be happy with. I know I was kind of like that when I was in Jacob's age. I really love the engagement in the videos. For me, I like the talk and the conversations that take place in the comments underneath the videos. So this week, I have a question for you, and maybe you can answer it in those comments. Would you or would you not have shot in that buck and why? Simple question, and there are no wrong answers. But I would like to get your perspective on Jacob uh, taking that buck, and if he should or shouldn't have taken the shot. Jacob, I think that buck might be the same buck you kicked out of that bed, the way he went straight to that bed and checked it out. He actually didn't even seem to be heading over towards the does after they ran off. He kind of went straight to that bed. I think he might have been about to lay down. I loved your shirt, and I appreciate the tribute to an old beat-up serial killer. <laughs> if any of you guys want to support Jacob and uh, help, help out a college kid, 
uh, you can purchase uh, his shirt. Uh, I, I told him he should make some and make them available. I think people would like it. So I'm going to put a link in the description of the video and you can buy that shirt directly from him if you'd like one of those. Jacob certainly is a serial killer in training. Young hunters with all that enthusiasm really seem to have a lot to prove. They really want that instant success. They want to be that big buck serial killer, but without doing the years of hunting and the years of experience that those that got there had. And that might sound like a knock, but it's not because every one of us that has gotten up to a little higher level and has taken some big bucks and maybe on a more regular basis has gone through that stage. It's part of the growing phase. It's, it's a phase every one of us goes through. But my comment to Jacob would be, be patient, young man, because your day is coming. And that, my friend, was a great buck. And certainly a worthy second biggest buck ever. So you can't always shoot Boone and Crockett's. You can't shoot them every year. If you do, you're on a game ranch or you're poaching. <laughs> it's a great buck, Jacob. Be happy with it. If that buck got you excited, take him and be proud of what you got. You can't always have the one you love, so love the one you got. Yesterday, my uh, great idea of taking the sling off my muzzle loader and putting a paracord on there, because I like a paracord cord better. Well, my paracord untied, and my muzzle loader fell from 25 feet up and came around barrel down because the barrel's heaviest and sunk to the stock. It took all my might just to pull that gun out of the muck. You gotta love this stuff. I'm getting out of the tree stand and the strap breaks on my gun and I am 25 feet up. Look at this. How awesome is that? That barrel is buried 12 inches down into the mud. I'm going to have fun getting the mud out of that. Unbelievable. You know, better the gun fell than me, right? <laughs> I spent a good couple hours yesterday uh, getting the mud pack out of that barrel, getting it unloaded, cleaning it up, and then shooting it and making sure it's on and then recleaning it.